What's going on, USG fam? Welcome back to another episode of the Uncommon Podcast. I'm your host, as always, Noah Weiss, and I'm excited to share this episode with you featuring Jay Jacobs, 39-year athletics administrator, former AD at Auburn, and a wonderful man of God, and, and just love this conversation. He shared so much insight and wisdom. A couple of things that I think will excite you is he shared his faith journey he shared how he reached the heights of being in the AD chair at Auburn, talked about some of the necessary skills that young people that want to be in a similar role to where he was should possess to be successful, and how he navigated the many challenges that come with working in the athletics industry while being a follower of Christ. This conversation was impactful. Jay also shared an opportunity to receive mentorship from him in his retired life he's doing mentorship through an organization known as ad advisors and you can connect with him and receive one-on-one mentorship using the email address in the description of this podcast so don't miss the chance to connect with jay but before we dive into the episode i want to share a couple of things with you as the listener the first is that we are officially into season two of the On The Common Podcast. Last week's episode featuring Kelly Masters was the first episode of season two. And really the exciting change that's gonna come with season two of the podcast is full length video episodes of the podcast. So if you would prefer to watch the episodes, you can do that on our YouTube channel. I'll make sure to link all of the episodes to be watched in the description of the podcast in the listening format. So make sure you watch the episode, check out that awesome and exciting change. And we're excited to be in season two of the podcast and the Lord's provision of the guests that have been a part of the 90 episodes of the Uncommon Podcast. Also wanna draw your attention to our conference, the Christians Working in Sports Conference happening this summer in Minneapolis, Minnesota on June 21st and 22nd. This is the second annual CWS conference. I was a part of last year's conference as a staff member here at USG, and it was incredible, impactful, and powerful. Jay Jacobs, our guest on this episode, was actually a speaker, and he plans on speaking again this summer, so you won't want to miss out. You can learn more and register with the link in the description of this podcast. You won't want to miss out. So, Without further ado, here is our podcast with Jay Jacobs. Podcasts are pretty common. So what makes the Uncommon Podcast uncommon? Well, it's all in our name. I'm your host, Noah Weiss, and we at Uncommon Sports Group understand the unique pressures and temptations that come with the career in the sport industry. We provide Uncommon training that helps you successfully navigate common challenges. Hit the follow button on this podcast. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Check out our website and become Uncommon. Jay, I, I would love to begin by talking about college athletics for you. It's, it's been in your blood for quite a long time. Uh, you were a walk-on offensive lineman at Auburn, which I did not know until I listened to Jason Romano's Sports Spectrum podcast, which I recommend highly to our listeners. And then, as I said in the intro, you spent 39 years working in college sports. So what led you to want to pursue a lifelong career in college athletics? Um, hey, Noah, thank you. And it's, it's, it's a blessing to be here. And uh, I really enjoyed the um Christians working in athletics last year, last summer, and uh, it, it's a blessing. So, looking for those of you in in, in sports, um, you know, Christians or seeking um, the June twenty first, twenty second. That's the date, right, Noah? You got it. Yep. Um, that would be that is a great opportunity to go and be with other um, fellow professionals in athletics. Um, but more importantly, or as importantly, is to uh, an opportunity to learn from others and just strengthen your faith. As, as we walk through this life, um, having Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, quite frankly, you Noah, know, back to your question, um, I really didn't pursue a career in athletics. Um, 
when I when I got through playing um, college football there at Auburn, I wanted to go to grad school, and so um, I, I knew that they had graduate assistants. So I was going to get my MBA, my bachelor's in business administration, and so they put me on scholarship, and I coached the tight ends for two years. Mm -hmm. um, had an opportunity to coach a couple of really great players, Walter Reeves, who got um, drafted by the Arizona Cardinals, mm -hmm. and another guy that a lot of people know from the baseball world, Frank Thomas, the big hurt. Yeah. He was a tight he was a tight end at Auburn before he decided to shut football down and just go all baseball. Mm -hmm. But the, I really didn't pursue it. I just uh, I was just working hard. My dad had an incredible work ethic, grew up on a dairy farm, got up every morning at 4, 35 o'clock and worked. Mm -hmm. And um, I just saw that in him. That's just how I was raised. And um, I just tried to work every day um, to make myself irreplaceable. Mm -hmm. And doors opened and opportunities happened. And um, when those doors opened and opportunities happened, um, mm -hmm. sometimes I get the opportunity to walk through them and sometimes I wasn't. And either way, it was always a blessing. So mm -hmm. I just followed the path that, that uh that was in front of me that god laid out in front of me yeah. and uh so that's that's how i that that's that's sort of a nutshell of my career mm. i love it jay i love it and, and i think it's it's really cool for our listeners too i think even hear just your uh passion for college athletics and, and really that you you sort of fell into it in some way right you mentioned the, the tight end job and, and coaching the tight ends and, and kind of just how that unfolded right to different doors opening and I think that's a, a wonderful way to share just your journey, right? Of, of that's that's just how it happened, right? That there wasn't any forcing yourself into this area or trying to make it happen. You worked hard. You did what you had to do in the present moment, and it led to other opportunities. So I think that's very applicable for our listeners and encouraging uh, to see that, right? And, and it lasted for 39 years. So that's wonderful to hear that. Yeah. And just, thank you. It, uh, you know, you know, one one thing that I saw Noah yeah. was uh, the the impact. Mm -hmm. that college athletics had on me. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a, you know, 205 pound walk on offensive line, but at Auburn, nobody recruited me out of high school. And, um, uh, I had, I, had, I really didn't have anywhere to go mm -hmm. and athletics, um, really gave me an opportunity that I would have gotten anywhere else. It gave me an opportunity to stay in school and to get a career what I saw was what the impact that the coaches and administration, the support had on me. And I wanted to be, I wanted to be part of that. I wanted to, mm. I wanted to pass that along to others as well. Yeah. I love that. And, and I think that's, that's so important too. Right. And, and we'll talk a lot more about your kind of the journey you had and, and sort of how things finished up later on in the podcast. But I think that is, that is very important. And, you know, Jay, it's something that I, I love to talk about on this podcast. And I think a highlight of of this conversation for me every time is it's talking about your faith journey. Certainly your professional journey is, is will is will be a highlight of this conversation and something we'll talk about, but it's not as important as your personal daily walk with Jesus Christ. So the question that I want you to, to share with us or answer is uh, how did you come to know Christ personally as savior? And then what changed in your life after following him? Well, if, if I hadn't had my, my Christian faith, my walk with him, I would not have had a professional career in all likelihood. Mm -hmm. So my story is when I was 16 years old, um, I went to a revival in a big coliseum in Columbus, Georgia. I was living in a little town called West Point, Georgia at the time. I grew up in a little town called Lafette, Alabama, which is about 30 minutes from West Point. Moved there, and a couple of guys said, hey, we're going over to this Pat Boone concert um, where he does – um, revival type speaking it was a municipal coliseum there in Columbus. Mm -hmm. And during that time, that evening, I felt something different about me. And um, I had an emotional reaction to it. Um, I started weeping and um, he had an altar call and, and I went down and I just felt completely different at 16 years old. Mm -hmm. However, however, with that, Noah, um, that didn't last very long. I went straight back to doing the same things I'd always done. Um, I didn't change anything in my life. Um, he was not the Lord of my life. Now, understand, I grew up in in the church, um, you know, Sundays and Wednesdays mm -hmm. and Sunday school and all those things. And those things continue to happen. My parents would continue to go to church, but nothing really happened. And I was really in the desert um, 
for almost 15 years. All through my college career, um, I, I never darkened the doors of the church. Mm. I, uh, I didn't, I didn't do anything. I just, I just, I was, wor- I was all about me. Mm. What was, what was best for me? And um, my faith was not part of it, even though I'd had that encounter when I was 16. Well, just by the grace of God, um, I married Angie Sapp from mm. Dublin, Georgia. Yeah. And uh, there was no question about it. Immediately, we were back in the church. And when I was in the church, these older gentlemen came to me, and they said, Jay, we want you to go on this thing called the Walk to Emmaus. And I said, I had no clue what they were talking about, <laughs> Noah. Um, now, now we all know the story of the Bible, yeah. but there is a spiritual awakening. It's not a retreat. Uh, it's a spiritual awakening called the walk to Emmaus. And they asked me to go to this. And they said, I said, so when is it? And they said, well, it's in October. I said, oh guys, I was looking for a reason not to go. I'm sorry. I'm the, you know, I'm, I'm the conditioning coach at this time. I'd been the tight end coach. and I became the conditioning coach for the football team. He said, I can't, I can't go in October. Mm. We got football season. I can't do this. It's for a long weekend, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. They said, what about in April? Well, heavens, this was a year before they were asking me. So I really didn't have an excuse why I couldn't go in April. Yeah. And so I said, I'll go. But anyway, um, I met my Lord Savior on the walk to Emmaus in, um, in 1990. Wow. And uh, I was walk number seven, table of John, for those people that know what Emmaus is. Mm. Um, and it just completely transformed my life. And then three months later, Angie, my wife, who was always a Christian, mm. she went on. She went on the walk, and it just as a couple, it just transformed my life. And if it wasn't for Angie, um, she's responsible for my salvation. Mm. Um, I would have never gotten back in church. Would never go on the walk to Emmaus, but she saved me. Mm. She saved my soul, and so um, that is my that is my spiritual walk, my mm. testimony. Just that simple. Yeah. I was felt him. Walked away from him, was in the desert, living life to the fullest with everything you can possibly think of. Mm. By the grace of God, I buried Angie Sapp. She came back in the church, and I got saved. Mm. Praise the Lord. And I'll have, yeah, exactly. Praise and I'll the have, Lord. I'll have, I mean, I'll, I'll live in eternity forever with him. Yeah. yeah. Such an amazing and, and complete salvation. He, re, he really does an amazing work in our lives. And I think, Jay, what encourages me about that story is the, the fact that when you were in the period of walking away from that initial experience, when you were 16, you were at the age where many of our listeners are at, right? I'm, I'm guessing it's late teens, early 20s when that was, when that was happening. And, and there was this moment when the Lord drew you back or this season when the, when the Lord really encouraged you to, to come back to Him, right? And walk with Him in intimacy and in relationship. And I like that because I think for a lot of young people, Faith can be as simple as, hey, I, I went to something like an altar call, and, and now I just don't even really think about it. Uh, when in reality, a walk with Christ is daily, and it's intimate, and it's a relationship, and He's our Father. And uh, I love that that the Lord used your wife and used the local church and used that walk to Emmaus uh, to do that in your life. So I'm just really encouraged. Absolutely. It's a great story, brother. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. And for, and for those listening, that they've had that encounter, they have not, they should. Mm. And when you do, when you do, do not do like I do, did. Latch on to that. Dig into that. Mm. Because that that is that is a fruitful life. Yeah, it is a fruitful life. It, it's the most joyful life. It's and and I'm, The most joyful life. It is. It is. And I'm yeah. excited to talk about that in terms of your career. I think that's, that's really going to stand out to our listeners of, of how you've walked with him throughout the portion of, of your career. And Jay, you know, I think something that so many of our listeners would like to ask you if they had the chance, so I'll ask it for them, is what was your journey like climbing the ladder from starting athletics as a conditioning coach, tight ends coach, and reaching the AD chair at such a high-profile university such as Auburn? And How did you prepare yourself for that role along the way? Well, you know, as, as, we, as we talked about just a few minutes ago, you know, I never had a career goal I wanted to be an AD. I, I just grew up working. I worked. I, I worked as a young boy. I worked for my grandfather, who, by the way, had an ambulance business in a funeral home. But every summer, every summer, since I was about twelve years old, I go work for my granddad. I mean, it's what we all did. We all worked. And yeah. so, um, you know, I, I, as I mentioned earlier, I got the work ethic from my from my dad. Mm. And um, and so, you know, I I just tried to work hard every day. I just I wanted just to make sure that 
I felt good each night when I went home that I'd done everything I possibly could do to benefit the job I was in, to enhance it. And, you know, and quite frankly, in the back of my mind, I was always thinking about how can I, what can I do today to make myself irreplaceable? Yeah. I didn't walk, I didn't walk around in fear of being scared, mm. but I wanted to make sure that, that, you know, if, if they started looking around as to, you know, who doesn't need to be here, I didn't want to be on that list. Mm. I wanted to be irreplaceable. Mm. And so I would, I, I, but I enjoyed it, Noah. So don't misunderstand me. It wasn't like it was labor of this is what I have to do. I enjoyed doing that. I enjoyed um, finding things early in my career that other people necessarily, the seasoned people necessarily didn't want to do. Mm. So I started doing some of the, what you would call the grunt work, yeah. what it actually did for me. It, it gave me a much better understanding of, of college athletics mm. because I was doing the, I was doing some of the little things that nobody else wanted to do. Boy, later in my career, at the time I didn't know it, but later in my career, I realized, you know what? I know exactly what the equipment guy's going through. Mm. I know exact. I know, I, I know exactly what the academic counselor is going through. Mm. I know exactly what the guy that's having to open the stadium and make sure that the ticket takers. I know what they're going through. Mm. So it just gave me a lot of empathy uh, yeah. for what was happening. But I just en- I just enjoyed doing it. I just enjoyed mm. being with people and working and trying to learn as much as I possibly could in the process. And because I had that work ethic from my dad. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. It's very, very applicable things, which I think is helpful for our listeners. I love that you, you pointed out work ethic. There really is no other industry. I mean, maybe uh, there, there's probably a couple in terms of medicine and others that have extremely long hours, extremely high expectations, but sports is unique in a way where it really doesn't require a lot of work and consistency. And often in, in, in an environment where you're not getting paid a lot, right, or you're kind of in the lower totem pole positions, and it can just be really challenging to kind of have that continual perpetual work ethic. So I love that you mentioned that about your journey. And I think one thing I took away from what you said as well is that you were present. You were in the moment. You were doing what you had to do and being intentional and focused and not so worried about, you know, I'm trying to make it to this level. I'm not trying to be the AD. So why, why am I sitting here? Like I'm trying to continue to move up. You were patient and you were doing what you were called to do in that moment. So I think that's for our young people who are in a stage where they're early 20s and are like, hey, like, I'm just a GA right now. How can I ever reach those heights of athletics? I think it's doing what you can to work hard and do your best and be patient in the role you're you're given at that moment. So I like that about your story. Yeah, like, yeah your story. I, I know. So so um, early in my career, I was actually a graduate assistant, and there was a longtime coach of the San Francisco 49ers who's been deceased for quite some time, um, Bill Walsh. And I heard him speak one time, and he said, Basically, what he said was, whatever you're doing, whatever job you have, be the best at that job. Mm. So if you're a grad, if you're a graduate assistant, be the best graduate assistant on campus. Yeah. And if you're if you're if you're the if you're the entry level graphic design person, be the best graphic design person. If you're the you know if you're the best person in media relations, be the best. Whatever it is, you be the best one. But the other thing that comes with that, Noah, is that you know the hangout factor. Mm. You know, is it is this somebody that you really that you really want to hang out with as well. Yeah. And so to have that love of your fellow man and your coworkers and other people, but also being really, really good at your craft, to say that word, um, I just encourage people to be really good at what you do because if you're really, what Bill Walsh said, if he was the best quarterback coach, he was going to eventually be an offensive coordinator. Mm. He was the best offensive coordinator. He'd be a head coach. That was his analogy. And that was his. That was his journey. So to the to the listeners, well, just be really, really good at what you do, and just know that there's nothing hidden. Yeah. Everybody knows what you're doing. Yeah, it's well said. So true, right? Just be be where you're planted and do it well. All right, even if it's right. very menial, small tasks. I mean, I remember in, in my student manager days. The amount of things that I felt like were such a waste of time, but really were, were building up a consistent work ethic and commitment in that role for me. Um, I, I think it can be easy to overlook those small tasks and not see them as important when they really are in the long term. So They are. And and also, know what you learned going through that. Yeah. You know, just really what you learned going about yourself, about others, and about the, and about the business. Yeah. So. No doubt yeah. about it. And Jay, I, I'm curious to hear this as well of looking at, the role that you had and just any role in college athletics, 
what are skills that you would say are necessary for young professionals to possess in order to be successful in a career within college athletics? It, 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 you know, the, the, and, and please, audience, understand these things that I'm that I'm suggesting, uh, these questions that I'm answering, the way I'm answering these are from my own experience. These aren't, you know, something I've read out of a book. Man. And so um, this is actually what I've gone through. So, you know, maybe some of them will be applicable to you. Maybe some of them won't be. But what I've learned, I've continued to learn too, Noah and listeners, is that you have to be a good listener. You know, so many times we'll find ourselves in conversations and somebody's talking and telling me something or telling us something, and I'm trying to think about what I'm going to say next. Instead of just yeah. pause and let's just listen. Yeah. Let's just li listen, listen to what it is. Be a great communicator. Have empathy. Have empathy what the person is going through. And sometimes, and uh, particularly in athletics, everything is going so fast that Sometimes we don't we don't show that empathy, and um, so to answer your question, you know, be a really good listener, be a great communicator, which you can't be a great communicator unless you have really good listening skills. Yeah. Um, have great empathy for people. Like, yeah. Try to put yourself in their shoes, and um, I think maybe one other thing I'd suggest, which is really profound, is that every decision that you make has consequences. Yeah. Either either good or bad. Every decision that you make has consequences, and usually they impact more people than just yourself. Mm -hmm. So yeah. just be mindful of that. Be mindful of that. The, the decisions you make today, one year, five years, 10 years, is somewhere going to come back up. Mm -hmm. You just want to make sure you look back on that time and know, you know what, that was a really good decision for everybody involved in that time. Yeah. So uh, those are some of the skills that I think about, Noah. Those are great. Um, that I wish I'd learned a lot earlier on. Yeah. But uh, but God, I'm a work in progress. God, God is still working on my heart. And uh, just like my grandmother says, he just knocked it off the rough edges so I fit better in heaven. Yeah, and so I just, so just, just keep those things in mind that um, it, it, it takes, it takes work to get there. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love the fact that you mentioned listening. I think that's, it can be really hard to be a good listener nowadays because we have so many voices, right? Whether it's, social media, whether it's the television or friends, family, coworkers. I mean, there's so many different things that are calling for our attention, calling for us to listen. How can we really zone in and be good listeners and effective communicators? I think that's in any role in sports, right? Uh, you have to be a good, effective communicator. Uh, and those things really stood out to me. And I think are, again, applicable. That's what I love about your answers, Jay, is they're applicable. And I think our listeners uh, can really apply those to their lives. So Thanks a lot for, for giving those those insights. Those are, those are wonderful. And, uh, you know, Jay, I think about your role from the outside and both of your roles that, that I mentioned in the intro at Auburn and Florida. They look really glamorous. You're in the SEC. You're in a, in a wonderful part of the country, beautiful weather most of the year with football programs and basketball pro programs and just athletic departments that have a lot of renown and a lot of success. But the reality is I'm sure there were challenges, many challenges to being a part of those high level institutions and just working in college athletics. So what were some of those, if you could identify just a couple, some of those challenging aspects during your career at that level of college athletics? It is a, it is a great profession to be in. Mm -hmm. I, I, thorough, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And, um, However, there are sacrifices that come with that. Yeah. Um, certainly, you know, there, there, there are perks that and benefits, but that's versus sacrifice. Mm -hmm. um, my wife and I have three daughters that are grown now, but there were many nights that I was not there to have dinner with them or tuck them in. You know, you have to make some really, really tough decisions that a lot of times you're on an island by yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, the, you know the, the decisions that that uh, that everybody you know knows is an easy decision. Those aren't the tough ones. The tough ones are when you're in a leadership position and you know more details than anybody else, mm -hmm. and so you have to make a tough decision that nobody else may understand. Mm -hmm. um, those are those are those are really hard. That could be a really lonely place. Yeah, and uh, you, know, you just can't you just can't please everyone. True. That. So that's what leadership that's what leadership's about. But you know, you can't be a good leader if you're not a good follower. Mm. 
And so that's where that's where the foundation of Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, came in was that, you know, I tried to follow him. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think that helped me be a, a, a better leader. I don't know how good of a leader I was. Mm-hmm. Maybe helped me be a better leader. But um, there are a lot of great things that come with college athletics. But just as you move up the ladder, you become more responsible. Um, you know, those decisions have consequences. And sometimes they only impact you. You have to sacrifice family time, personal time. And uh, there is no 5 o'clock on Friday in college athletics. Somebody's always playing on Saturday, Sunday, whatever day of the week. There are always things going on. So um, it, can, it, can, it can be a lonely place for leaders. Yeah. You know, and so um, you have to surround yourself with people that, uh, you know, mentors and Christian groups and, mm. and uh, small groups that, that can understand what you're going through and, and help lift, keep you lifted spiritually. I love that last point. So true. I think one of the desires that we have as a ministry and, and all that we do is to provide that connection of like-minded people who follow and love Jesus, who experience a lot of the same challenges. That That's really what we hope to do. So I like that last point. But to what you said, I, I think there is a common thread. I think when you think about the sacrifice of of, this, of working in sports, and it makes me think of Luke uh, chapter 14, when Jesus is actually outlining what it is going to take to be his disciple, to follow him. And he even says that it, it can be compared to a king considering if his army is, is fit to fight another king's army and, and taking into account what is the, the sacrifices that's required, what's the risk, what are the things I'm going to have to give up. And I think we should do that, right? One, as followers of Jesus, for sure. But two, I think as uh, people jump into careers in college athletics and sports in general is, is take... Uh, some time to consider sacrifices, the things that will come with it. And I, and I appreciate you sharing. Um, and I guess a, a follow-up question that I, w- I would like to hear you answer is, how did you remain consistent in the busyness, in the challenges, and stay involved in college athletics for as long as you did despite some of those challenges that you had to face? A, a couple of things, Noah, and thanks for your comments. Um, you know, Proverbs twenty nine twenty six. it became one of my – here's the interesting thing. It became one of my verses before I knew, you know, that you wanted to have a verse. Mm. It was just one of those. It was just one of those things that, unbeknownst to me, the Holy Spirit put on my desk one day in a in a calendar, mm. and it just hit me. It just hit me. And over the last twenty five years, He has walked me through Proverbs twenty nine twenty six, which basically says, "To many seek the ruler's pleasure, but all men are judged before God." Because I'm a because I'm a people pleaser, this this proverb spoke directly to me. Mm. Is that you know what Jay? Whatever role you're in, um, you're not going to be able. You, don't worry about pleasing people. Just worry about pleasing me, your father, mm-hmm. Abba, yeah. the one and only. There's only there's only one person to please, Jay, and that's me. Mm. That's, my, that's 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 you, your Lord and Savior, and so that is what. That is the foundation in which I was able to start um, uh, walking through um, these jobs with, yeah. so these these responsibilities with, was, you know what? It doesn't matter what anybody else feels like. If I if I know every day that he is pleased with me, mm. and everybody everything else would just have to you know just have to work out on its own, it'll be okay. Mm. Amen to that. So true. Yeah, I'm also a, a huge people pleaser. Struggle with that a, a lot in my journey, and it's so true that the only real individual, or I guess uh, three persons in one individual, that we should be pleasing is our Father, right? The the living yeah. God. And as as yeah. his as his disciples, that's really our mission. That's really what what we should be doing daily is seeking to please Him. And I, I like that point because it it flows well into my next question, Jay really only imagine how much pressure you had at Auburn and Florida to do your job, maybe in a way at times that was not honoring to God or did not go in line with, with his word. How did you strive to consistently do your job in a Christ-centered manner, despite the heavy pressure you faced in your role? You know, Noah, I could not have, what's so ironic about this is that I could not have done my job, could have done my job without the Holy Spirit. Mm. I can't. I can't imagine being a husband, a dad, um, working, 
um, whatever it may be in life, I can't imagine walking through this life without the foundation mm. of of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. I can't imagine that. So it was, you know, being a Christian in the workplace made my made my job so much easier. Yeah. Hang on, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. It made my decisions so much easier. It didn't really make the job any easier, but that was my foundation. That was my steady. And people all around me knew that. But when I ventured out of that, people would check me. Mm. You know, I we had um, had a couple of ADs that we did a uh, telephone devotional once a week. I was involved in Gideon's. I was involved, as I mentioned, the walk to Emmaus. Mm. Um, we started a group called ADs for Christ yeah. um, about five or six years ago. I was involved in a small group. I have a Christian mentor. It's a gentleman that's a lot older than me that is always pouring into me. And so my the, the Christian foundation, having the Holy Spirit in my heart, made my job and my decisions so much more comforting. Mm. I can't say it made it any easier, but that was my foundation that I stood on. Mm. And other than that, I'm on seeking sand. Yeah. And uh, but I but I stood on a rock going, you know what? This is what the man would be pleased with. This is what I'm going to do, mm. and I'm aligned with him, and everybody else just have to get on board. Amen. And that's that's the that's the way we're going to do it. Amen. And if you don't if you don't like it, you can lump it. You yeah. know. So yeah. that's just now understand now as I, as I mentioned before, you know these are things that I learned the hard way. I did not consistently do that. Yeah. I'm human. We live in a fallen world. Amen. But I know back to my roots. Noah was that was that mm. foundation. And if I could get myself in the right place spiritually and mentally, mm. I can make I can make tough decisions built on biblical principles. Yeah, it's a book there that tells us everything if we're willing to take the time to pray and study and get wise counsel. Mm. And uh, it was it was it was interesting your question, Noah, because when I first became AD, I thought, man, how am I going to do this? Yeah, and blend in my faith. Well, at my at my announcement as press conference, you know, I quoted Proverbs 29, 26. Mm. And and every day, and I, I care I have a keychain that I have Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. I've got a suit up in the armor every day. Amen. And um I just have to keep reminding myself of those things. Now understand that, you know, I may be 50, 50, I may be 40, 60, just depends on the day in the booth. <laughs> but um I know that that is where I should be. So good. I love that you pointed out that you weren't perfect because that, you know, that is impossible, <laughs> right? It, it's not achievable really for any of us. And and I can even speak, right, of working in ministry that there are difficult days even when you are in a Christian setting. So it, it doesn't really matter. Regardless, you have to be aware that, hey, I'm going to fall short. But when I do, I have the Holy Spirit who is a convictor, a discipliner, but also an encourager and one that loves my soul, right? So I, I don't have to fear his discipline is for my benefit. So I think that's that's a great point, Jay. And, and also, I loved your points on mentorship, having people around you, right, to check you when it's necessary, uh, to be there, to encourage you, to make the decisions that do honor the Lord. And you mentioned 80s for Christ. I, I would love for you to share a little bit about the benefit that 80s for Christ has had for you and just explain it to our listeners who aren't familiar. Sure. So it is, um, it's open to anybody that works in college athletics. And um, so we have a, uh, once a year, we have an annual meeting and it's going to be um, July the 19th, 20th this year in Nashville, Tennessee. It's, it's uh, no, no, you know, there's no cost to come to the event um, other than, you know, you're traveling in a hotel, but uh, on Friday and Saturday, we'll have a host of speakers around college athletics that, that talk to us about, how are you a Christian in college athletics for encouragement to be around other fellow believers, brothers and sisters in Christ. Mm. And, uh, that just, that just, that just came out of a, a couple of us talking about it one day and said, you know what, this is something that maybe we should try. And so I think the first year was 2016 or maybe off a year, maybe 2015. I don't really recall. And uh, we went to Dallas, Texas and had, I think 30 people. Mm. Then, uh, last year, I think we had about 110 people. And uh, we do we we've been doing a a monthly Zoom devotional. Um, we think we all sort of got zoomed out for a little while the yeah. last few months, so we quit doing it. But we're about to start that back uh, this Friday. Wow. But it's just it, it is it is just another 
It is another um, growth opportunity and accountability opportunity mm-hmm. for people working in college athletics, for Christians working in college athletics. That's that's simply what it is. We're there, yeah. we're there to encourage one another and support one another and pray for one another and know and just encourage people. You know what? You can be a lot better administrator in college athletics if you are a Christian. Mm-hmm. And here's some examples of how you can do that. Yeah. It's amazing. That's what that's what ADs for Christ is. Yeah, yeah, it is amazing. It is truly it's amazing what God will do. Truly an impactful organization, and I've had the the blessing of being at three ADs for Christ conferences uh, the past three years, back to back to back, which has been wonderful. And I look forward to being back, Lord willing, again this summer. So, if you are a college athletic administrator right now or aspiring, uh, definitely join Jay and, and the crew at ADs for Christ uh, this coming summer. And, and Jay, you mentioned this earlier. One of the challenges that is obvious in the sport industry and college athletics is the busyness of your schedule and having to sacrifice a lot of your free time and your family time uh, to do your job well. So how did you balance not just, you know, family time and time at home, but also being able to be involved in a local church and do kingdom work alongside of your busy schedule during your 39 years in athletics? I just, I, you know, over time, Noah, I learned to make it a priority mm-hmm. for me. I knew that, um, you know, like that old analogy, there's a fire going, there's a bunch of coals in the fire, and you take one and put it on the hearth all by itself, it goes out. Mm-hmm. I learned a long time ago that I have to, that you know that we have to fuel ourselves. Yeah, yeah. We have to be intentional about fueling fueling ourselves spiritually, mm-hmm. physically, and mentally as well. Yeah. Okay, and and nutrition, all those all those play a factor. But I knew that. In order for me to be the best I could possibly be, that I had to stay fueled spiritually, mm. as well as nutritionally and physically and mentally. And so I just made it a priority. I was, as, as I mentioned, um, I was part of Gideon's Walk to Emmaus, 80s for Christ. But really, you know, a Christian mentor that I had in my small group, people that I could talk about things with that I knew would be there to encourage me and keep it confidential. To help me grow spiritually. Yeah. Um, you know, it's sort of it's sort of like the analogy of the 18 wheeler going down the road carrying carrying a big, you know, truckload of gas. They don't ever stop and fill up their own tank. They can't pull that gas very far because it's gonna run out of gas. So we have to we have to put ourselves first and our family second when it comes to taking care of our what we're stewards of. Mm. So um yeah. that's but I but I really have to work at that, Noah. Mm. I mean, I really have to I have to be proactive and ask people, let's do a Bible study. Mm. You know, sometimes people just don't come to you and say that, but True. I know that for my benefit and for the, for the, for the kingdom to increase, I have to be spiritually fueled mm. and uh, I have to, I have to, I have to work at doing that every day. No doubt. No doubt. I love that point, Jay. It's so important to be fueled spiritually. I think just to, you know, to have connection with the Lord, it allows you to do everything else in line with, with his will. I mean, I, I can speak from experience that if I have a day where I, I miss my devotional time and I miss intimacy with the Lord in prayer, I just, my actions aren't, aren't the same. The way I, I act, the way I react to things that make me mad or things that make me frustrated, it's all different and it's not in a good way. Uh, and, and I think when I am connected and when I am in my devotional time, and I'm sure you feel the same way, uh, we're much more in tune with uh, the Holy Spirit, much more in tune with God's will in our lives. So I think to your point, having the, those groups and accountability uh, and making it a priority, right? And, and not making excuses, seeking it out is also a huge part of having success in that area. Very well said, Jay. I, I, I agree hundred percent. No, the, the, the thing that happens to me and maybe it happens to some listeners is that, you know, it, I, I can get on a vicious cycle where, mm-hmm. you know, okay, I missed today and I'm going to miss tomorrow. And then I just sort of start checking out thinking, okay, I'm not, I'm not going to worry about it anymore. And it just gets really bad. Yeah. So wherever you are, just stop right now and say, you know what? I'm going to stop this. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go back to, or I'm going to start a Bible study, or I'm going to have some quiet time, you know, do it where you can be successful. If you just need 15 minutes, you know, tomorrow morning, just get your 15 minutes, Mm -hmm. just take care of yourself. But it's, it is hard to do for me sometimes, but I know the benefit of it when I do it. Yeah. Still, particularly as you mentioned early on, Noah, there's so much noise coming at people today, mm. you know, you know, com- comparison's the thief of joy. Mm. And I see a lot of people today comparing themselves to other people and what they have and what they're doing or be an individual. 
be you. Be a be a be a be a trailblazer. Yeah. Be a be a soldier. Be a warrior for Christ. But take care of yourself first. That way, you'll be the best warrior for Christ. Mm-hmm. Amen to that. So well said, brother. And I couldn't agree more. We we have to be intentional about taking care of our our bodies, our minds, and especially our souls if we're going to do our jobs in a way that that honors Him. So it's very well said, Jay. And one thing I wanted to talk about, Jay, today, and I think is just a, a pivotal part of your career, is you did transition out of your role as AD at Auburn in 2018. And as an Auburn fan growing up, as an Auburn football player, uh, I'm sure that was challenging in a lot of ways to have to leave sort of a dream job. How did you continue to trust in the plan that God had for your life despite that challenging time? That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a great question. You know, so at the, there are two different perspectives. At the time, how I felt... And now what I know, mm-hmm. because because how I felt was that I'm going through this fire and I don't know what the end of this looks like, you mm-hmm. know, professionally, family wise, every, everything. I don't know what this looks like. But now, Noah, I'm on the other side of it. It was the biggest blessing in the world. Mm-hmm. But I didn't I didn't know it at the time. So what God did was God put me at a place at the University of Florida which I was two hours from my 90-year-old parents, which is the closest I've been to them in 40 years. Mm-hmm. And I got I got to see them weekly. They put me two hours from both of my sisters and my brother-in-law, who is my best friend. And and I and I and I go back to Florida where I'd finished high school in Jacksonville, and I'm working with uh, Scott Strickham, the AD, who we'd worked together at Auburn you know, 25 years prior, mm. and he had become the AD of Mississippi State. And he's one of those guys, along with Mitch Barnhart at Kentucky, that we had a weekly devotional with. Mm. And so, I mean, it was just it was just wonderful. And mm. the experience in Gainesville and at the University of Florida was, was just unbelievable for me. And it gave me the opportunity to um, step back just for a minute. Now, not, I wasn't the AD. So there's a lot less responsibility. It gave me the opportunity to grow spiritually. Mm-hmm. But as important to me, Noah, it gave me the opportunity to mm-hmm. do when I could and, and, and when I was willing to feed into the people that work with me every day yeah. to help encourage them. Mm-hmm. Because I'm on a completely different track than they're on. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, I'm in the ninth inning. Yeah. And, and, and some of them are just now coming up to bat. Mm-hmm. And so it gave me an opportunity to take to build some great relationships and learn a lot, learn a lot from, from this younger generation as to how they do business and how they think. And, and, uh, from my benefit, it was absolutely wonderful what I got to learn from them. And occasionally I think they may have learned something from me, but, uh, it was, it was quite the blessing, but I didn't know it at the time. At the time I thought, what am I going to do? Where am I going to go? I am retiring from Auburn. I had about two months where I really enjoyed fishing and golf and those type of things. And after that, it was like, wait a minute, I got to do something. And then mm-hmm. God just dropped it right in my lap at the University of Florida through Scott Strickland. What a blessing that's been. Amazing. I love that. It is amazing. It is amazing because, you know, I'm sitting there thinking, this is, t- this, you know, what am I, what have I done? What am I about to do? Mm-hmm. And I get to the end of this, I look back and think, I mean, God had me the entire time, just like he's had us all our lives. Amen. He has you right now where you are. Mm-hmm. You, you just don't know the end of the movie. Yeah, you don't know what it's going to look like, but when you get through it, you look back, you think, hey, "Why did I ever question it?" Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You had me far better than I could have had myself. So that's good. hard to do. It's very hard to do. <laughs> it's very hard to do when you're not getting maybe what you think is your way, right? Or or the the thing that you hoped or thought would happen. I think that's really when we struggle to, to lean in and say, "Lord, I trust you. Lord, I know that you have my best interest in mind." And Romans eight twenty eight that all things work towards his his good purpose, even if it is things that are hard. So I love yeah. I love yeah. that yeah. perspective, right? I think hindsight is twenty twenty. We can look back on some things and say, you know what, I saw God's hand in that. I love that you've done that and, and can even just see that blessing now at this stage of your life, Jay. So wonderful testimony and encouragement for those listening who may face something similar one day or are facing that now, that they can trust right. his plan. Sounds well said. Right. And Jay, you, you mentioned the ninth inning of your career and, and you're officially, it's, it's game over. You've officially retired uh, from college athletics. I'm just curious, how did you know that it was time to move on and what have these past few months of retired life been like? It, um, it, it wasn't 
one thing that that happened that it was time to move on. Angie and I, my wife Angie and I, we've been praying about it. You know, how long should we be here? Well, um, we have one daughter in Birmingham, Alabama, and then the youngest moved there back in May. And, um, you know, so being closer to them, my parents who were in Tampa when I was in Gainesville, we actually moved them to Tallahassee, mm-hmm. which is now three and a half hours from Auburn, not eight hours like Tampa was. And um, the other thing too is, Noah, so, th- so those things from a family stand- standpoint, yeah. which I really, I really hungered for because I've, I've always felt like that I, that my, my daughter sacrificed so much when I was working in athletics and they did, they sacrificed, but they got a lot of benefits from it. And today they would tell you they want anything different. They loved mm-hmm. exactly how it all worked out. Now me, I miss, I miss, I regret not having some of the time that I could have had with them had I had, I had a different career. Yeah. Um, like I mentioned yeah. earlier, not being home at dinner and tucking them in and missing certain things. Um, was a sacrifice that, mm-hmm. that they made, and um, I, I regret that. But they don't; they're 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 great. And so having you know being closer to them, my parents now three and a half hours away versus eight hours away. And the other thing too is Noah is that um, you know it gave the people at Florida, um, you know, there's some great people that work there. It gave them if I move out of the way, it gave them a chance to grow. Mm-hmm. I was sort of I was I, I may have been you know, an artificial ceiling over the top of some of their careers. And so, boy, just to, just to know I could step aside and, you know, be very um, um, pleased where we ended up closer to my daughters and um, knowing that God had ordained where we were and everything had lined up that we could move again. And it created an opportunity at the University of Florida for some people that worked with us every day that would encourage them and inspire them um, it was just all those things like that. Noah came together. Mm. And we said, okay, this is what we're going to do. It's amazing. So that's what we did. But Noah, did the second part of your question, what am I doing now? So, so me, me and three other people have started um, an agency called AD Advisors. And uh, what we, what us four do is we want to be there for athletic directors that need something outside their athletic department. We want to be a circle of support for them. Mm. Like I said, it's called AD Advisors. It's a, uh, it's a life coach named Colette Patterson. Been doing it for 25 years. Uh, a gentleman named Ari Fleischer, who was President Bush's press secretary. Ari's on our team. And a guy named Jeffrey Holbrook, who was Wayne Gretzky's marketing and PR guy. And we're all, you know, we're all on the end of our careers. Mm. So we just want to do something to help give back to college athletics and to professional athletics. So we started AD Advisors, and uh, we have several different components that we do. But it's a lot of fun. Uh, particularly being with those three folks, yeah. and uh, it's keeping it's keeping me a little bit busy. But we we're, we're starting to get a little bit more busy. But uh, it's been a blessing, and you know, giving me an opportunity to um, reconnect with some old friends and and do some fellowships. So it's been a blessing. Mm-hmm. That's so amazing to hear. I, I love too that it seems, at least from from this perspective, that work was not an idol in your life, and that giving it up provided for you a lot of of blessings that. Uh, that you were looking for and that God provided, right? And so I think that's encouraging, right? That work is not everything. Work is it's a part of our lives. It, it's, a, it's a joy that God gives us work to do. But when the time comes to move on from athletics, whenever that is for our listeners, like that, that's an okay thing to do, right? We're, we're so much more and our value goes so much beyond just a career in, in college athletics. So I love that you made that point. And I wanted to ask if our listeners would like to to get get involved with AD Advisors or learn more. How can they do that? They can just they can just contact me directly. Um, um, you know, uh, my my email is real simple. That's it. So you can, you can reach out to me. We'll be happy to support support you in any way we possibly can. Mm-hmm. Or we'll be good listeners anyway. Yeah, I appreciate that, Jay. That's that's awesome. Love what you're doing and love what the Lord has you right now. And Jay, my final question is simple. You're at this point of your life. You've learned a lot during your 39-year career. Share with our listeners some of the lessons and advice that you have for this next generation of Christian athletic directors. Um, you know, I, I think there's a I think there's a lot of things, but uh, you know, one one thing that I've already mentioned one time is that um, you know, every decision you make has consequences, mm. and so just just keep that in mind. There's, there's nothing in a silo. There's nothing in secret. Every decision you make has, has consequences. 
the other thing is seek wise counsel. Just talk to people. Talk to people that you respect and people that you'd like to be like. Mm-hmm. Surround yourself with those type people. And, you know, any any decision that you make is going to affect a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Other thing is um, you have what some of us call intuition. You know, I call it the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Trust your intuition. When something doesn't feel right, it's probably not right. Mm-hmm. But but work work at it to make to confirm that. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and when you know something's not right, go ahead and act on it. Mm-hmm. Do appropriate time um, in prayer, any wise counsel, but go ahead and act on it. Some of the some of the mistakes that I made, Noah, were, um, you know, there, there were some people that I probably should have had harder discussions with that were incorrigible, but I'm as a, as a people pleaser that I am and somebody that believes in people, sometimes I would let people, let things go too long. Mm-hmm. It's not a good idea. Yeah. It's not a good idea. When you, when you know something in your heart, in your head, and they don't match up, if something's wrong, go ahead and make that decision mm-hmm. and be truthful with people in a Christian way. Yeah. People people want accountability, be held accountable. Uh, and then maybe the last two things is one is, you know, comparisons and thief of joy. Quit comparing yourself to other people. Mm-hmm. You know, compare yourself to yourself. Am I better today than I was yesterday? Mm-hmm. You know, in, in all areas, in all areas of your life. And then, um, you know, one thing that I've said throughout this is seek wise counsel. Mm-hmm. Surround yourself with people you want to be like. I'm repeating myself. I know, but I just can't. I can't encourage that enough. Be you. Be who you are. Mm-hmm. You're uniquely created for the mm-hmm. glory of God, and find that fulfillment. And quit comparing yourself to other people. You be you. Love other people. Treat people with respect. Treat people the way that you'd like to be treated. Yeah. But just know Proverbs twenty nine twenty six says that. Many men seek the ruler's pleasure, but all men are judged before God. Mm. Just make sure that you lay your head down each night and you did what you thought was the best in the, in the eyes of, of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. I love that advice, Jay. All of that is powerful. All of that is, is God honoring and all of that is applicable. So I really appreciate you being willing to share. And, and Jay, just grateful for your time, brother. Uh, it's been amazing it's to my see pleasure. you over the course of my time here at USG, just your willingness to serve and give back. Uh, be a part of our ministry and, and us be a part of your guys' ministry in 80s for Christ. And so just blessed by your time and thanks for being here, brother. Hey, it's, it's been a pleasure. I appreciate what you do and certainly do appreciate all the ministries you all have going on. It is a blessing and we just need more and more of it. So thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Uncommon Podcast. Be sure to follow, like, or subscribe to the podcast on your preferred listening platform so you don't miss an episode. If you would like to get involved with Uncommon Sports Group and our ministries, tap the link in the description to learn more about ways you can engage with the USG community. Until next time, we pray that you will strive to be uncommon by glorifying the name of God in whatever you may do. See you next time.